Hey everybody, Bob Babbitt, Challenged Athletes Live. Our guest, Dr. Bob Gailey, who runs all of the amazing OSER CAF amputee running clinics around the country. And we have Famita Ayambiku, who was on the Paralympic team in 2016 in Rio. How are both of you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing it's, very well. Famita, it is so nice to meet you. Um, talk a little bit about your, your backstory. You were 11 years old when you were in that uh, auto accident with your family, and mm -hmm. you, you were ejected from the car and ended yeah. up on the highway. And from that, injury, from that accident, what, what, did, what happened to you? Um, I broke both my arms, and, of course, my right leg below the knee was amputated. Um, yeah, I was in the hospital for about two and a half months, and um, recovery was pretty decent, considering everybody kept saying, because, you know, me and my sister were so young, the recovery yes. uh, probably was a little bit smoother. But And so you were at 11 years old. I'm sure you were doing all sorts of different sports beforehand. Was sport an option for you after you lost your leg? I wasn't really that into sports before. Um, and definitely not after. So I think my, it's not I think, my freshman year of high school, I played basketball um, for about like two and a half months. Yeah. But I only had a walking leg at the time. And some people can do it, but for me, my stump, it was just like too much for my stump. I was getting a lot of blisters and things like that. So um, I had to stop. So that was as much, as much athletic career that I had in my adolescent days before I started running. And was it, as a young girl, uh, people have problems with self-image anyways, but as a young girl missing a leg, how hard was that for you? Oh, it was terrible. Um, <laughs> I think in the beginning, it was more just trying to recover and, you know, just learning how to adapt with life in that sense. But um, there were, there's... There were kids that teased me about, you know, having one leg and just like you said, just my own self image. It was hard to um, kind of get through with that. And for the first eight years of my accident, I after my accident, I was um, trying every which way to make sure people did not see my prosthesis. You know, I was wearing long pants. I was wearing leggings. I was all year round, you know, in the summertime, I'd be wearing these long leggings and people were like, aren't you hot? And like, I just didn't want people to see my leg. And um, my freshman year of college was when I decided, you know, like, this is, this is enough. Like, how much longer am I going to keep living like this? Like, I need to be okay with myself. And I need to know that, like, the world is going to have to accept me, you know? And um, I, I wore my first pair of shorts my freshman year of college. And then from there, it kind of got better. <laughs> what, was it one of those things where your friends saw you in shorts for the first time and were like, wait, you're missing a leg? <laughs> no, actually the first day of college, um, I'll never forget this. I was wearing a pair of leggings and I was walking out of the dorm room and a boy came up to me and he was like, what's wrong with your leg? And I'm like, oh my God, they figured it out. <laughs> And then I ran into the bathroom. I ran into the bathroom and I started crying. And one of, a girl came into the bathroom. She's actually my best friend now. We've been best friends ever since that day. But she came into the bathroom and she's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, this boy said there's, my leg looked weird. And she looked down and she didn't notice. And she's like, I don't know what's wrong with this girl. <laughs> but um, that was like my, my coming out time in college because I thought I was going to go in there and be able to hide it for a very long time and it was the first day they figured it out so <laughs> kind of had to get with the program when did you hear about the oser caf amputee running clinic and was that scary for you to go to it that whole experience was crazy and like it literally just went over my head because i remember my prosthetist telling me there was a running clinic coming to boston and they were going to teach amputees how to run and i'm like oh my gosh that sounds so cool and i'm like oh but i don't have one of those legs that i can run with and she's like oh no they're gonna let you borrow a leg for the day 
And I'm like, oh, then let me borrow one. So we went through like the casting and we did everything. And I remember putting it on for the first time when we were trying it on. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Julian, I love this thing. Like, how can I keep it? Like, what's gonna happen? And she's like, oh no, you know, unfortunately insurance doesn't cover it. So they're just gonna let you borrow it just so you can get the experience of running for the day. And I never forget when I walked into that, that clinic, everybody was like, oh, for me to see the guest of honor, the guest of honor. And I'm like, I don't know why they're saying that. <laughs> Literally not until the moment that they said, we're giving you this leg. I had no idea. And that was when I first heard about the challenge athletes and Osir. So Dr. Bob, uh, you run those clinics. You were in Boston when this is happening. Did you have a sense of what was what was going on and how much this leg could impact this young woman? Well, it, it, it's funny. And how you doing, Famita? It, it's been a while, but I've been following your career very closely. Um, so I don't know if you remember this, and I'm going to let you speak on the other side. But uh, we lined everybody up, and everybody was paired with the physical therapist, and of course, a lot of people wanted to be with Famita, and so. Um, they were running back and forth, and there was this real tentativeness about her. She was, she was doing it, and then all of a sudden, I come up on the other side of the therapist and said, no, you can do better, and we kind of <laughs> dragged, pushed, pulled, and got her down, and all of a sudden, her legs started going one after another, and the look that she gave me through all the thousands of people we've worked with, I'll never forget, and she was <laughs> like, what are you doing? But I will say within minutes afterwards, she started to really move the legs like an athlete, and it didn't take long for everyone uh, at that clinic to realize that she had something special. But I would ask you, do you remember that at time where we finally got you going? And then there was even a very special person by the name of Jerome there who also noticed that there was a, 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 a talented athlete among us. Yes, I definitely remember that. And I remember right after you started pulling me, I'm like, oh, I can do this. And I'm like, I think I should be with the experts now. <laughs> so Jerome Singleton, who was a Paralympian, did he, he saw something in you probably before you saw it. Definitely before I saw it. Um, him and my coach, I tell them all the time, like they tricked me into this because <laughs> right after I met, um, when me and Jerome spoke after the clinic, he was like, you know, you look like you're in pretty good shape. You should, you know, come meet my coach and see. And I'm like, well, I really just want to learn how to run. You know, I didn't even know anything about Paralympics or anything about being a professional athlete in that sense. And I'm like, I thought he was just, you know, getting me to learn how to run. And they were definitely getting me to do that. <laughs> So then, how long was, this, was it from there to actually being uh, in Charlotte for the Paralympic trials? Uh, six months. Six months! So you yeah. went from receiving the surprise Oser running foot of, uh, at a CAF grant at the uh, clinic in Boston, and in six months, you go to the trials, and you didn't just go to the trials, you won the 100 meters and qualified to go to Rio? Yep. <laughs> that is when fast learner. Is that what we call that? Female, the fastest female amputee in the United States from 2016 up until now. And how did that change your perception of you when you go through something like you didn't know you were a runner? Not at all. <laughs> you didn't know you were a runner. So okay. what the experience of going from not being a runner to winning the trials to going to Rio, what was that Rio experience like for you? It was overwhelming to say the least. Um, definitely like a humbling experience. Um, my coach always says, you know, you got so much success so fast. Everything just happened so fast that I didn't even get like a minute to step back and be like, oh, this is gonna be my life now. You know, um, going into Rio, I thought I was gonna go there and win. So <laughs> I was very disappointed when they're like, well, you finished in the top half of the world and all these things. But it was definitely, um, I think, like I said, a humbling experience because it made me wanna work more. Um, I'm like, okay, I, I did this. Now I wanna do more, you know, and I wanna I want get better. And I, I wanna be able to compete with these people and know that like I'm really at my, my top best. And I think, 
it was it was it was a beautiful experience though definitely uh, and i'm guessing that that motivated you to want to go to 2020 now 2021 what how, it, it, are you full time training is this like this is it this is it <laughs> this is definitely it um it's it's a lot it's a lot um i i'd be real tired after after training i'm tired now but i'm here um <laughs> it's definitely a lot especially it's been super hot and out here in boston we have the reggie lewis center it's an indoor facility and that's where i usually train but we haven't gotten to have any indoor days because of all this heat i mean because of the covid and then all this heat um so we've been outside but it's been it's been good i enjoy i enjoy running um it's it's really become like a huge passion i think just like bob said um once i put that on i absolutely fell in love and i just i wanted to keep doing it and it wasn't even to be a professional athlete it wasn't to be one of the best it was literally just because of the joy that it gave me so what uh, for somebody who's just starting out their amputation journey they just lost their leg recently what advice would you give them to keep pushing every day is not easy there are hard days you know um People think, I mean, even now, I, I have my days, you know, and it's like, it's, it's not like you have to look for every day to be perfect. You just need to get through every day knowing that better days are coming. And yeah, I think, I think that's, that's a big deal for me personally, because I remember when I was being so young, having my amputation, I didn't meet a lot of amputees, which is why I really like to be out in the community. And like, I always, I like to have my leg out when I can have it out so that if there are other amputees that see me, I want the conversation to be there. You know, um, like I said, when I was young, I didn't see a lot of amputees. I didn't get to have these kinds of conversations to get through those days. And like, I would love to just be that for people. So whenever I'm out in the community or anything like that, it's like, you know, you have to engage with other people and just learn and hear about other people's experiences to kind of get you through your own. And I think staying tight as a community that's why I love CAF. I love OSA. I love everything that you guys do because it really brings people together and having that sense of community and knowing people that have gone through what you've gone through. And even like being at like your beginning stages, knowing that your days are going to get better. It's, it's very, it's very inspiring. It's very, very motivating to be able to see that, especially in the beginning. So Dr. Bob, when you see someone like for me to receive a running foot at the Boston Clinic, and within six months, she's the fastest American woman uh, and making the Paralympic team. How does, how does that make you feel? Well, you know, for Pamita, obviously, it makes me feel uh, wonderful um, to see somebody uh, move forward and to do so well. But I think what is really special about Pamita, uh, and if you kind of go online a little bit and see a little bit about who she is, uh, you'll find is that, you know, it was kind of paid forward to her with receiving that first running leg, which I understand that she still has and she it treasures, but she's also providing uh, exercise videos and other information for future athletes. So now she's also paying it back. And I, if I were to say anything about all the folks that we come across is that it's a very small number of people that go on to have her success. It's even a smaller number that go on to help other folks who are in her situation. I don't know if she'd like to speak to it, but I think that's what makes her so special. Not only did she receive it, but she's willing to give it back. And I think that she's that kind of person that's going to have a lifetime of giving back, which is what CAF is all about. Amita, you want to address that in terms of the importance to you of helping that next generation? Oh, yeah. Um, I always talk to the people at Oster and I always tell them, um, it always gets me teary out. I'm going to try not to cry here because <laughs> I'm sitting in my room. Um, you don't realize the simple things that can change somebody's life. And this, like, as simple as it was, you know, OSER and CAF, they go around and they do these donations all around the world. And I know the day that they gave me that leg, I'm like, 
I'm going to make these people proud because I don't want them to think that, you know, their efforts have gone unnoticed and what they did for me, it was so, it was so special. And to know that somebody was just, didn't know me as a person, never met me before and just thought like, this person is going to need that. And somebody was able to do that for me. So I feel like it's so important to do that for somebody else because look at the way it changed my life. So imagine, I know if I can just go out and just be that person for somebody else, it can absolutely change their life in the same way. So for me to, for, with the game supposedly happening next summer, uh, mm -hmm. what are your, what will you be doing between now and then? Obviously there's no schedule. So is it <laughs> just build, are you in a build phase? Are you, cause there's no races in the imminent future. What are you doing training wise? Um, just trying to maintain. Mm. Um, definitely, obviously, leading up to Tokyo, we would increase our training and do all that stuff. But coach doesn't want us to burn out. But he also doesn't want me getting lazy. So we're staying on top of training and um, just, just maintaining right now until it's time to start building up again. If somebody had told you before this uh, amputee running clinic that you came to, hey, you know what? In six months, you're going to be the fastest female on the, uh, in the U.S. at 100 meters. What would you have said to him? I, <laughs> I <laughs> honestly, I have to say this because I always say it and it's just so funny to me because right before I graduated college, one of my friends used to run track and I always used to make fun of her. And I'm like, that is the worst sport ever. Nobody's doing anything. I'm like, you guys are just running around in circles. There's no point, you know, and that like, <laughs> and then it ends up being the joy of my life. So I, <laughs> I would definitely laugh if somebody would have told me that before, I probably would have said exactly that to them. <laughs> I love it. Hey, Famita, congratulations on everything you're doing. Thank you for all the support of CAF. And uh, Dr. Bob, what you are doing is changing lives every single day. Keep doing what you're doing. And, and thank you both for coming on Challenge Athletes Live. Of course. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Famita. You're welcome. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.